Which knuckles should you be punching a bag with? Some people think this, some people think that. Today we are going to show you the scientific reasons on why it should always be that. Perfect! If you're punching this off, it doesn't really matter how you hit them. Any part of your knuckles, any part of your hand, look. I can even finger gouge, tight you to the throat. But today we're going to talk about the boxer fracture. This little bugger here, this little metacarpal at the end, little lower one. Boxers, if you look at most of them, they do actually punch with these two knuckles. And there's a lot of reason to that. As I hit here, you can see, this is all in line. These two run across the ulnar radius here. If I go here, see, if I hit with these three, and it goes all the way through here, it all looks good, yeah? Until you realize these bones are super weak. Super weak. They're really, really small and skinny. We've done a bit of research, me and Joe, for once we went on to a California medical report, and some like 61% of all hand injuries were the boxer's fracture, where they're hitting with these part, with these three knuckles here, obviously predominantly landed on these two. Now what we're trying to show you today, the science backs it up as well, kinetically too, hitting this way is a much stronger way of hitting. Everything's backed up, it's all kinetic, and so if I hit, I'll show you slowly now, I'll just do a bump all up. Here, 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 I can start putting power, my hand stays solid. All the muscles in your forearm are forced to work to hold that solid. This is a stronger position to hold your hand in than this. Look at most sports, I know it's um, not much of a correlation, but look how people hold a golf club. Here, tennis racket. Here, they even finish for in the dark. Here, right? That is a stronger position. If you do a grip test, you hold your hand down, you're stronger in this position you are in this one. If you don't believe me, try it. Get a gripper, squeeze this way, and squeeze that way. So already your stabilizing muscles have proven to be stronger when you hold your wrist this way. So that leads me to believe that surely, hitting with these two knuckles that are already bigger, stronger, better in line, better supported, would be the right way to punch. However, people like to argue. So we're going to try and debunk their way of doing it today. So, debunking time. Can you hit with these with all the punches? Can you hit with your two big knuckles here for all the punches? Pretty much, yeah, if you change your wrist angle, you change your elbow angle. If I throw an uppercut, you can come up here, you can come up here. I still hit with my two big knuckles. I don't turn it this way, so I don't uppercut like this. I turn it. I, uppercut. I myself personally, I throw uppercuts this way, all the way up, so only my two big knuckles land. If I throw a hook, so if I throw a hook from here, see that? From here, all the way through. So I do it a little bit harder, here. It's solid. It takes a bit of getting used to. When I first started doing it, it was sore, and I would appreciate that, because you're not hitting with any of this padded stuff here, you're hitting with just the two knuckles. And it does take a bit of getting used to, so don't be disheartened if you get a little bit of swelling. My knuckles over the years have developed a little bit. Can you see that in there? Nice and developed. Both sides, that one there's a bit more broken back, because obviously, no matter how perfect you punch, eventually some of it will give way if you hit something hard enough. He's a very tough guy. I ended up breaking both my hands in the process trying to finish him. You can just see it there. Yeah, it's like right up here a little bit. So, you know, ended up, I've never broke my hands before. That's just the way it is, I'm afraid. I mean, I've actually broke this hand here, which is uh, annoying because it sort of contradicts what we're saying, but it doesn't when you realize I actually hit incorrectly with the hand. I only hit with one of the two knuckles. I threw a left hook here, and I hit with just this knuckle, which obviously snapped my index metacarpal with there, just folded it, come through the skin, blah, blah, blah. But it fixed up, and now I hit better, I hit more correctly, hit with the two knuckles. Now, as a drill to get better at this, I would just recommend building up. You can hit the hard things, I hit sometimes a bit of a, of a solid target. I build it up and I start changing the angles and I start hitting. Now, it's always good to wrap your hands, get, get a nice big strong wrap, get a nice big bit of padding over the front. You want to save your hands. 
it's not like a it's not a dick measuring contest in this sport. You'll see the old whacker boards, you see the old traditional martial arts where they go tuk -tuk 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 -tuk, and they're hitting a solid board. Which I, can, I, I know that the method behind it because it does do micro fractures and it comes back, but you can also get that when your hands are padded. Because obviously you're hitting a skull, it's quite thick and you don't want to get in too much of an issue with that. What my hands look like, as you can see, is very, very swollen right now. With the pins is sticking out of my flesh a little bit, but it'll be all right where I dislocate it. Now let's get into the cool science of it. Let's dive into it a little bit closer. All right, here. Now, you can see, we have a nice little close-up here of these all in line, your ulna and your radius here, holding all of it in support. You see how that is one straight line. Here, there's too much of a, see this gap? There's nothing supporting this bit. Even if you are hitting with these three knuckles, it's still allowing for a roll. Here, that is locked in place. We've already established that it's stronger in this position anyway. So the chances of you going, Whoa, it's quite slim. And also you can train your forearms. These muscles here, you can get real developed. See those bad boys there? You get them real developed, and this will hold it all in place, preventing as much as possible a hand injury. As a fighter, hand injuries can hold you back a long time. I broke my hand twice. I know it was my fault. I broke it first time with a bad punch. Second time I broke it, I come back to training to her, and I went back to training just missed six weeks afterwards. I broke it again, sparring. So I was out for 12 weeks. And then I had a nice rehab. My forearm was as skinny as a rake. Where I, I, couldn't, I couldn't use my hand for so long. So I had a lot of muscle um, wastage there, which also meant I couldn't hold it in a strong position. So I had to have rehab, strengthen up my forearms to come back into it. I've got to be honest with you, I don't really know why Kung Fu guys hit with these three. I got a feeling, I got a, um, an inkling of an idea. I think it's because when they actually punch in Kung Fu, Kung Fu or when they're doing the Wing Chun punches, and I'm not really good at this position with the way, so don't judge on it, and they do their chain punches here. It's not actually a powerful strike. You're not loading your whole body up, bang, and cracking it in. You're punching short, little compressed punches here. I mean, it's still not nice, you still want to get hit by it. But you'd rather get hit by 10 of them than one whip being Mike Tyson overhand right or a big body shot left hook. If you were to load this up, so it's like here we're saying, or oh, square arm for the wind shot. I'm not very good at chain punches, I've never trained it. And I'm glad I haven't. Right, if I were to load this big punch up now, all the way back here, bang! I can already feel it, something going in there, something's not going, going on quite well. Like it feels like I'm pressing, it feels like something's crushing here. Doesn't feel very um, plentiful and friendly down there. When I turn it, it feels pretty strong. Conditioning your knuckles for a self-defense situation, probably not the smartest thing to do. Because in a self-defense situation, you just want to hit them with whatever you can. If you break your knuckle, you break your knuckle, shit happens. Obviously, if you are a trained fighter, this will come instinctively. A lot of self-defense guys teach to obviously hit with palms and elbows and backhands and open palm stuff, you know, bass rooting style. But if you can't train how to punch something, who's to say that that's going to work? If you've trained this enough, you will never need this. So to teach someone one or the other seems a bit stupid. Hand breaks and hand fractures are so common for people who don't train. As Brad said, the boxer's fracture, which is from impacting and catching knuckles and turning the hand in the wrong direction and breaking stuff, is the most popular and common fracture amongst sport athletes. There are lots of other bones in the hands that can break. If you punch too square on and you haven't tensed your forearm and your hand twists that way, you will snap your scaphoid, which is a very small bone base between the wrist, it's trapped between the ulna and where the metacarpals meet the ulna. If you crush that thing, you will lose a lot of flexibility in your wrist for the rest of your life. Rehabbing it is absolutely horrible. A close friend of mine did it, thought he was cool, didn't wear his cast, and now he can't really move his hand. And he's gonna have that for the rest of his life, all because he was showing off being a dick. Punch properly, learn to punch properly, impact with the correct part, 
build the strength in your hand, build the strength in your knuckles, and just train responsibly. There we have it really guys. I, mean, I can't say leave it in your hands, I would highly recommend punching with these two here. But what do I know, I've not got my um, ninja staff sash with golden dragons on it. I don't mean I don't train out of school hall. So, <laughs> so it's up to you. I mean, I trained at a professional gym, so and I had professional coaches. But what do I know compared to the school janitor that teaches kids classes <laughs> at a school hall? I'll leave that in your imagination. But from here, please, guys, punch with the two knuckles. Another good video on this is by Sensei Seth. He also goes through it. Okay, so basic lesson from the day. If you're gonna punch a bag, punch it properly. If you really wanna punch it properly, wear gloves. Don't risk it. Especially when you start getting fast, you start trying to get a bit cocky, you start trying to throw in some combos. All it takes is for one knuckle to go a little bit soft or for you not tense up properly, and you're gonna break something. Absolutely not worth it. Glove up, wrap up, best way to go. If in a self-defense situation, if you break your hand, fucking just be glad you're not dead. It's the best way you can really say it. It's not worth it. It's the last thing on your mind. Yeah, it should be the last thing on your mind. You know, if you are thinking about a, what technique to use during a self-defense situation, it's probably not a self-defense situation. You then become the attacker. Can you imagine Realistically, yourself? someone comes up to you and says, you know, or just wants to fight. Obviously, if there's a knife involved, that's a, that's a different situation. But someone's like, come on, motherfucker. And you're like, right, I'm going to fucking come in and help. Yeah, that's, that's, that. that's no longer a self-defense situation, that's just you beat the shit out of someone. The argument of those or those, sport application, those all day long, self-defense, whatever the hell you can. But if you are here to train, which most of you are, punch properly. You will find so much more benefits from punching actually properly. But Moving forward, make sure you like and subscribe because we've got lots of cool stuff coming out. We've got lots more podcasts, lots of cool guests we're going to work on. We're going to be doing training drills with Brad and lots of other pro fighters. We've got podcast guests coming up and we also have a merch launch when we hit 10,000 subscribers. I know this channel is brand spanking new, but we know you can do it. If you share our videos, post us everywhere you can, we will be at 10K very soon. Um, and we will run competitions. We're going to do live streams where we're going to do free giveaways. We're going to do absolutely everything we can. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.